welcome to How to Make a Low Budget Genre Film. And we've got, we got some esteemed panelists here, so I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves, starting over on this end. Hi, I'm uh, Rob Fitz, and they made a movie called God of Vampires for $26,000 over a period of 10 years. Hard enough to bring some copies here. Um, <laughs> my name is Brian Pace. Um, I work here with Hunter. We make movies. We just started a company called Obvious Notion. Hopefully, we'll have a lot of stuff coming your way soon. Are, are we loud enough? No, no, my voice is pinched and whiny. You can hear it. Uh, I'm Hunter Kressel. Uh, I uh, worked for nine years in art department and miniature effects in Los Angeles and uh, now make. Uh, Apart from uh, being a freelance uh, videographer and, and corporate videoist type guy, what is that? Oh, that's right. Works with Rob Zombie. Uh, yeah, exactly. I care about that. Uh, but now we've got a company, Obvious Notion, and we make uh, genre short films, long films, and very, very inexpensive films. Uh, I'm Matt Green. I uh, direct independent films in Atlanta and surrounding. I made three films with Tom, and I just uh, the budgets have ranged from four thousand to one hundred fifty thousand. So there's a pretty good gamut of what you can and can't get away with. Hey, uh, I'm Tom Savini. My new movie opens today. It's Machete. Anybody see it? Thank you. Uh, has anybody seen it? I know there was a midnight show last night. Anybody see it last night? Because I still haven't seen it, and I woke up to a picture of Danny Trejo in this morning's uh, paper. Apparently they liked it, so... What is that that we're competing with? I'm sorry? But what do you tell them? There's a voice in the room? No, there's... We're hearing voices? At least, but, but all of us are hearing that, right? The war work. No, I'm Jeff Ello. I am a uh, special effects artist turned filmmaker. I uh, just finished a project, well, working, I'm almost finished with a project uh, that we shot a month ago, a short uh, time travel movie. Uh, basically, any story you give me can be turned into a, a time travel story, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Because we stumbled over the same question in San Diego. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. No, we're using our local equipment. We're using the actual built-in. Hello, hello. Yes, you are. Um, my name is Jim Torres. I actually came to the panel to watch and participate as part of the audience member, but Aaron spied me and called me up here. We made a film a couple years ago called Like Moles, Like Rats. It was released just 20 years after. Uh, we had a little bit of a mod more modest budget, but um, I'm just happy to be up here with Tom Savini and the rest of these guys. So I'm going to kind of watch like halfway from the audience and participate at the same time. Don't be modest. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> okay, well, thanks for coming. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm Aaron Siegel. I'm a professional sound mixer here in Atlanta, Georgia. I've worked on all sorts of genres of films. Probably the one that you know besides uh, 20 years after is called The Signal. Yeah, that was released yeah. a couple of years ago. And um, that was kind of a low budget genre film that uh, was sold to Magnolia Pictures for two and a half million dollars. Anyway, um, so let's start out with. Um, let's start out with. Comic uh, art? Yeah. Let's, no, let's, seriously, uh, let's start out. Let's ask all of the panelists why. Uh, why do they like making low budget genre films? I don't like it, you know, I just can't find money. <laughs> now, I know, but wait a minute, wait a minute. It was Bob Dylan that said, and if you wake up in the morning and you go to bed at night, and in between you do what you want to do, that's happiness, that's success. You know? So, you should start liking it. <laughs> you'll never have to work a day in your life. It just turns out that, uh, you know, there's always an audience for a genre film. That's why it's a genre film. <laughs> Agreed, yeah. I just love genre stories, and specifically the post-apocalyptic genre. And, um, you know, I think that, that genre is kind of limitless in what you can do with it. So, you know, just get a couple of folks together and a talking voice in the sky and tell as many stories as you can. Can I well, I think... Oh, oh, no, I, I, you know, it's, it's all about having fun, you know? Uh, 
my my motto, I don't say goodbye to people anymore, I say have fun no matter what, okay? I'm going to have that translated into Latin and make a crest, you know, have fun no matter what, because if you make moment to moment fun, that adds up to what? A fun life, right? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll get, I'll get people that uh, email me about being in a film, and, uh, and we were just talking about this. If somebody asks you to, to do a film and they say, how much do you want? Never give them a price. Say, what is your offer? And you'll be surprised when they come at you with five times what you would have said your price was, and that's what you will make, okay? So always say maybe an offer. So anyway, I'll get the scripts, and it's really like, you know, a horrible thing, and, and but they have the money, but I won't do it, even though there's a lot of money. Then I just recently did a film in Connecticut called The Sadist. They had no money, but the script was, I play this psycho killer with no dialogue. I have no dialogue as the killer. And I thought that would be great fun, you know? And I went up there, and it was, man. I got to beat up cars and drive you know, forklifts through trailers. And uh, I, I, I break open this gate in this barn like Charles Bronson, and I laugh like a little girl while I kill this pig, you know. <laughs> fun! It was fun, okay? No money, but that was fun. So it's all about fun, you know? I agree. I had, I have to say that you find a script that you like, and you do it. You know, there were, there were a couple of scripts. The Signal was one of those scripts where it's like, they sent it to me and they said, uh, well, we don't have much of a budget, but they, they sent it to me and I, I read through it and I was like, when I got halfway through it, I said, I've got to do this movie because it's fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's, um, you know, it wasn't even a zombie movie. It was, you know, different. If I, if I can just add to that, there are DPs that I know, big, big time DPs that will take a low budget uh, 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 something just to get out of the green screen room, you know? Just to get out in the world and not have to shoot in front of a green screen. Well, I'd say from my end, you know, uh, the formative movies when I was growing up, and obviously I would imagine I'm in good company here because our fantasy-based movies, science fiction genre movies. And um, these days, uh, technology has gotten to the point, so, to where uh, when you have uh, overactive imaginations like myself, you actually have technicians like some of the folks up here that can help you make that sort of thing happen. And so it's almost really as close as they get to making a wishes come true, as silly as that sounds. And, um, you know, the, the, the genre, as I also mentioned earlier, there's a built-in audience. Uh, right now, uh, Hunter and I are working on a steampunk project, and, uh, you know, you can just... Uh, Throw that word out there, and uh, you get a, you get maybe a little trepidation from folks that say, "Well, you know, uh, can you do it? Can you not do it?" But um, you know, you automatically have some potentially really hardcore interest in there. So I would say that my bet. Yeah. I was just going to add that um, the less money you have on a film, generally, uh, the less people have their hands in the pie, and there and you have more freedom to, uh, you know, to get out your artistic expression. So it's really, I think it's amazing in that level, you know, and it's ironic that, you know, what should free you is to have the, all the funds and resources, but when you have no money and you have to uh, overcome and adapt, you uh, actually make better art a lot of times. And that's why these independent films uh, kind of break ground, you know. That's that's why, that's why we do it. And, and that's why... I love it. Is that no one can tell me what to do if no one's actually putting money into it, <laughs> you know? Would you say that some of George Romero's movies, the low budget ones, are better than when they gave him a gazillion dollars? Oh yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Alright, um, I want to talk about comics a little bit. Um, the. Uh, Everybody said what I wanted to say is so much better, but I will add that I have always described low-budget filmmaking, particularly genre low-budget filmmaking, as telling very small pieces of very big stories. And what, what I try to do is to convince the audience to kill the man next door. And while doing that, believe, believe that there is a much larger thing going on, but I'm only going to show you how it affects these lives. One example of that would have been Signs, Shalom Signs. You know, that's not a low-budget picture, but it definitely had a low-budget sensibility to it in that ID4 was taking place, but it, we're just going to show you the story of this one family. Um, 
or uh, you know, uh, only Mr. Savini will remember this one. The the I, guy in the room with the phone and the war. The world is going to war. Oh yeah, Miracle Mile. No, no, that's, no, no, no. The, the black and white movie. The guy. Failsafe. Failsafe. Yeah. Okay. The entire world is on the brink of nuclear war, and there's one guy. It's the president in the room with the phone. And I, what I think that the low budget genre film allows you to do is concentrate more on how big events affect people, and you get to focus on on the lives of these people. And Why then you can be a moron story? like me who decides to write something the size of you know sprawling. Huge, you know, cinematic epic, and it has four thousand dollars to throw at it. So we were talking about this in another panel, but that's the beauty of budget filmmaking is you figure it out. I mean, I've been on—I was on a movie two years ago that cost seven million dollars, and I watched them have the same exact problems that we had. They just had a money hose to throw at it. And at the end of the day, I saw the movie. It sucks, and they didn't have any better actors that I have access to. They didn't know they mind you, they're paying them, and they've got trailers and all this stuff. But at the end of the day. Who cares? I can. I was doing effects on the show. I can do the same effects with or without a trailer that we had that was costing them probably what two grand, three grand a week. You know. So at the end of the day, it's it's hard. I mean, but there's a way to get anything. This week I did. I'm I'm doing a trailer for somebody that I was doing special effects on, and they got uh, no money, but they're they're raising money, thirty two million dollars. They're on the edge of getting from a grant, a, a, a grant actually, because they're doing it. It involves uh, a specific. But not, uh, 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 Obama anyway. stimulus project. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, I was doing fireballs, you know, big, massive fireballs in a, in a parking garage. I was just like, man, how how cool is this? How much fun is this? And we had no money, and it just worked out. This guy called and said, "What can you bring to the table?" And so I brought everything I had to the table, and we had so much fun. At the end of the night, I you know I would like a paycheck, but at the same time, I'm like you said, I'm I woke up the next morning going, wow. On the opposite side, I did two weeks of set dressing on Vampire Diaries recently, because I'm in the union here, and it's just the most mind-numbing, non-creative job on the planet. And sure, you're getting paid three fifty a day, but at the end of the day, I didn't care. So it's, that's he makes a good point. What are you in Vampire Diaries? Um, I have a film school in Pennsylvania, and I went uh, to Kmart and I bought the cheapest little video camera I could find, and I shot a commercial for the program with it. You know, doing panoramic shots of downtown Pittsburgh, and you know, and a lot of creativity, a lot of special effects in that little camera to prove the point. Uh, when I showed it in class, I said, "This is what I shot it on." I picked up this little camera here, and they couldn't believe it. I said, "It's not about the materials; it's about the, the mind. It's about what you can come up with, and then just go out and make it." You know? We had a student at the school when I taught there. Remember Ninja Cop? <laughs> it was the one that Derek did. It was a, it was a really you know, just the students got together and wrote this script. They had, I mean, when I say no money, I mean everything was just they didn't have actors, but it's still the funniest thing you've ever seen because it was so well written. Uh, Remember? You the graduation. Yeah, and we all just died laughing. And every shot, well, they didn't even know how to they didn't even know how to cut. So every shot would be a push in on a line, and they just cut them all together to make it funny. And it was it doesn't matter as long as you got a good story, anything is possible. It's all about story. It has to be about story. It is about story. Mm -hmm. Questions so far? Way back there. Have you guys ever had a setback that actually turned out to be an improvement in the end? Like something went wrong, but after you figured it all out, you're like, oh, this actually makes sense. I got one word for you Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> the shark didn't work. And that made it a so much better movie. I'm, I'm sure we've all had those. So. I've got a huge one. I, I had written the end of a movie. This was two years ago. I'm shooting a film. I bring a I bring a twenty thousand dollar movie in under a fifteen hundred under budget and the, and the guy won't give me the money to do the ending we wanted which was only going to cost three hundred dollars so I had to rewrite the ending and in the ending I had a car wreck and I got no money for a car wreck I thought about miniatures I thought about all this stuff at the end of the day I had the guy get hit by the car we show him flying the grass and you hear the car wreck and everybody thinks I did it on purpose because we're paying attention to this guy's reaction the whole time and it's so much better and he's funny so, so yeah it, 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 it made huge better. But you wouldn't have known that if you didn't have that setback. Right. Th this falls on the line of something, uh, again, when I was working with Hunter in a movie called Zero Prospect, he can tell you about this more than I can, but we were trying to make a good star field for the background. It's a, it's a space oh, yeah. movie, and it's got, you know, the Starship a lot of its fixes. The hardware movie actually made on the cheap. And uh, when he first tried it, he just basically poked some holes in a black board and shined the light through, and it just didn't look right. It looked like somebody trying to make a star field, but <laughs> he had 
um, accidentally made some scratches on that bike or, or... Well, actually, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm...